Hi guys! In this video, we're going to add a simple bass line to our track. If you are new to music making in general, you probably want to stick closely to the notes I'm using. I'll be basing my later chords and melodies off the notes in my bass line. If you have more knowledge of music theory, then feel free to ignore what I do and write your own parts. I'm going to be using citrus as the instrument for my bass. Sorry, Fruity Edition users. You will still be able to add citrus to your project if you're using the Fruity Edition, but it will be removed the next time you load the project. Remember that you can download my project files from each video's description. My projects were saved with the full version of Citrus, and so will load fine for you. Let's start off by adding Citrus to the channel rack. There are several ways of doing this. For now, let's just use the Add menu. Open the menu and select Citrus from the list. Don't worry that my list looks different from yours. If you can't see Citrus, try switching to Simple View or click on More Plugins and type Citrus into the search filter. When we add a new instrument to the rack, it is selected by default, which is indicated by this little green box here. The first thing we want to do is assign Citrus to a new empty mixer track. The easiest way to do that is to hit Ctrl L on your keyboard with the instrument selected. Once we do that, a little number is displayed next to the entry in the channel rack. This shows the instrument's mixer track. You can also change the mixer track by moving your mouse over the number and using the scroll wheel to increase or decrease the value. If we open the mixer with F9, you can see that the mixer channel 5 has been automatically named Citrus and given the same color as the instrument in the rack. The first four mixer tracks are already being used by our drums. I won't go into the mixer in great detail now, but you should know that you can use the volume fader to set the level of whatever is rooted to that track. If you hold Alt and click on a fader, it's set back to its default level. Alt clicking will set most settings back to their default in FL Studio. Let's switch back to the channel rack. Remember that you can display the channel rack with F6, so if it's hidden by the mixer, hit F6 until you can see the channel rack again. You can also set the volume of each instrument in the rack itself using the volume knob to the left of the instrument. Most of the time, I leave the volumes here untouched and use a mixer instead but there can be times when you want to use these knobs instead. I can again set the volume back to its default by Alt clicking. Click on the Citrus entry in the channel rack to open Citrus. The UI might look daunting, but don't worry. We're simply going to load a preset for our base. To do that, click on Presets at the top right of the window, open the Base category, and select Base 03. This will load the preset. You can click on the keyboard at the bottom to hear what it sounds like. Because this is a bass sound, click on one of the lower notes on the left of the keyboard. Of course, you can choose another preset from the list if you prefer. Hit F4 to add a new pattern, type in bass to name it, then hit F2 a few times to get a suitable color and hit enter. Let's add this new pattern to the playlist. Hit F5 to open the playlist if you need to, and add this new pattern below the drums on track 2. Right now, it's empty, so let's go back to the step sequencer so we can add some notes to the pattern. Right-click the instrument in the rack and select Piano Roll from the menu. Alternatively, you can hit F7 with the bass selected in the channel rack. This will open FL Studio's Piano Roll. You can see which instrument you are editing at the top of the piano roll window. The piano roll is similar to the step sequencer in some regards. By default, each bar is divided into 16 sections, just like the steps in the step sequencer, with the four main beats in the bar shown with a thicker line. You can see the bar numbers at the top of the piano roll. We want to add a four bar bass line, which will go from here to here, the end of bar four. 
I have a piano keyboard displayed on the left of the piano roll. If you don't see the keyboard, you can enable it from the piano rolls menu. Select View, Keyboard Style, Classic to change the view settings. The easiest way to make sure that the notes in our bass line are in key and hopefully sound musical, only use the white keys on the keyboard. These are the notes of the C major scale, making it the easiest scale to remember. It's a great place to start if you're new to music. Each row in the piano roll corresponds to a note and, like the step sequencer, notes are played from left to right. Simply click in the piano roll to add notes. Right click on a note to delete it. To scroll vertically in the piano roll, hold down the middle mouse button and drag up and down over the keyboard on the left. You can tell if you've added a black note as it will have a hash sign in the name. For example, this is a G sharp, while this is a G. While working on the bass, it makes sense to play the track so we can hear how the bass sounds in the context of the track. Hit the space bar to begin playback and hit it again to stop. If you don't hear the drums when playing the track, make sure you are in song mode. Remember, you can use L to switch modes. Okay, it sounds like the bass is a bit loud. Let's quickly fix that. Hit F9 to bring up the mixer and then turn down the fader on the mixer channel with Citrus. That should do nicely. So, I quite like the sound of this bass line. If you want to copy what I've done, pause the video and replicate this in your piano roll. Feel free to experiment a bit, but I'd suggest you keep most of the notes the same so that you are using the same chords as I am later on. You might want to change the rhythm a bit though. Once you've finished working on your bass line, don't forget to save. We've made some pretty big changes to the project so let's save a new version. Hit Ctrl N to automatically save a new version of the project. The name of the project will be the same as before, just with a 2 added to the end of the name. Each time you hit Ctrl N, this number will increase. You can see the name of the current project in the info area at the top left. It's a good idea to get into the habit of hitting Ctrl N every now and then. Having multiple versions of your project gives you backups in case something goes horribly wrong. So there we have it, a beat and a bass line. In the next video, we're going to add a melody to the track by making our own sound from scratch. I'll see you there.